The 2019 NAMM Show is finally wrapped and it has been an absolutely hectic week. We've seen so much stuff here, way too much stuff to share all in one video. So what we're gonna do is do a quick wrap up video here, kind of show you all of what we saw really quickly. And then in the coming weeks, we're gonna be cutting together more detailed videos, some first looks and some even some interviews and behind the scenes kind of things with the different folks that we got to meet. It's been incredible to be here. Thanks so much to Pro Sound Web, Live Sound International for making it possible to get us here. We can't wait to be back next Next year, it's going to be so much fun to see everybody again. Let's take a look at what we saw. Over 115,000 registered industry professionals are here for four action packed days of meetings, talks, and sharing a lot of laughs. There's loads of incredible gear to see, some really insightful seminars to attend, thanks to AES, and obviously we're here to listen to and demo equipment from companies coming from all around the world. We're also going to ask a lot of questions along the way. The North Hall of the Convention Center, for only the second year now, holds the majority of the pro audio exhibitors, covering every aspect of live and studio gear you could imagine. Walking into these halls is certainly overwhelming. I've spent the better part of my life working around this gear and it still takes me back a step seeing the sheer size and scale of this event. I've heard the phrase kid in a candy store used to describe us a few times this week as we've been going around shooting video and talking to the reps, but I don't think that's entirely fair. This isn't a candy store. It's not even a candy factory. This is almost all the candy factories in the world bringing their creations to one place for store owners and industry professionals to experience firsthand so they can bring the best stuff home to the rest of us. With 7,000 brands represented and a 14% increase in international participation throughout the entire show this year, it's incredibly exciting to see the pro audio side standing out on its own and growing so quickly. Being our first visit, we want to do something a bit different. Seeing the scale of this thing, it's even more obvious that we have to have a tight focus or the days are just gonna get away from us entirely. With that in mind, we've set out to find out who's doing something innovative, who's trying to solve a problem, big or small, in a unique or different way. We're using our time talking, listening, asking questions, and looking for the stories that the spec sheets don't necessarily tell. In the coming weeks, we'll be digging into all the footage we shot and putting together as many videos as we can to share it all with you. We'll be taking a look at the Live Sound International Speaker Showcase and at the manufacturers who took part in the demonstrations. We had a chance to listen to sound systems from DB Technologies, Crest Audio, Martin Audio London, TW Audio, Verity Audio America, RCF, Alcons, Yorkville, Void Acoustics, EM Acoustics, and Bass Boss. The systems ranged really widely in both size and type, which made for a really unique experience. The format consisted of multiple matched round robin sessions throughout each day, with periods in between where each manufacturer could demo anything they wanted at any level within their 20 minute window. This kept things fun and gave everyone a chance to demo and to hear everything they wanted to throughout the whole weekend. More on this though in our behind the scenes look at the showcase that's going to be coming very soon. We'll go inside with the engineers who actually put the uh, event together to show you how they made it fun, fair, and how they kept everyone happy throughout some very long days of loud system testing. We've got an awesome interview with Dave Ratt and the whole Sound Tools team to show you everything new that they're getting into for 2019. Their booth was a ton of fun, from the crazy M4 subwoofer demo to all of the new products, prototypes, and packaging. We had a bit of fun doing some investigative journalism with Dave and Madeline too when it turned out that a competitor was selling a suspiciously similar cat box just a few booths away. More to come on all of that in future episodes. Of course, we have some in-booth videos too, where we get to take a look at all of the other innovative gear. We visit Alan Heath and get a first-hand look at the various iLive systems. Their ability to offer the same processing and portable racks while utilizing a surface that meets your needs for each individual engagement is very nicely done. As someone who owns a ton of camera gear, I also really like the huge think tank lid organizer they had on display in this awesome little tour pack. We stop in at Yamaha's big booth to elbow our way onto a PM7 for a few minutes, as well as taking an up-close look at the Nexo Geo M12 arrays and their integrated rigging before we head outside to the Yamaha stage to actually hear them in action. Subscriber Seja Lincoln let us know that the company she works for, Morris Light & Sound, actually provided the boxes we're seeing here coming all the way from Nashville, Tennessee for the show. 
The Electrosonics booth has been packed all weekend, but we were able to find a few minutes with Carl Winkler. Now you might know him from all of his AES talks on subjects like RF coordination and wireless technology over the years. He gave us the full rundown on the latest Electrosonics in-ear monitoring systems and they were incredibly impressive. The stereo separation they achieve is remarkable and the transmitters, receivers, and software they developed are absolutely packed with time-saving features that make setting up and reconfiguring on the fly quick and easy. We'll also go into depth on the ENG kit that Electrosonics let us take on this trip and show you a little bit about what this incredible setup can do. To be honest, I'm not really looking forward to finishing Electrosonics video about this gear as I'm gonna have to send it all back in a few weeks. You get really spoiled on gear like this very quickly. We'll take a look at some very slick new rigging and rack lighting toys from Whirlwind. Their booth has innovative problem solving tools in every direction you look, so there's gonna be loads more from them shortly. We spent some time with Presonus, meeting with the great folks who've helped us set up so many of the past videos we've done here on the channel. We asked some questions that you sent in and got to check out some of the newly announced USB-C interfaces that they just put out here at the NAMM show. I'm hoping we'll have a chance to take a look at those in a future review series. Let me know in the comments below though if you'd like to see that. Innovation continued with some folks you might not be so familiar with, like Triad Orbit and their amazing array of clamps and stands that I've used some of in the past. I really like their hardware and I've actually seen it come through town on some big name tours, so we stopped by to check out everything they have for 2019. Jim Slick of Slick Audio and Cyber Systems caught my attention big time with his custom audio computers. We talked with him and got the lowdown on how he uses his more than 35 years experience building enterprise level systems for the medical industry to put together custom mini PCs, laptops, and even rack mounted solutions specifically tailored to music and content creation. I'm hoping to get one of his systems into the shop soon to test and put through a review. Uh, we're all Apple here currently, but there's really no better way to try switching than to have a custom built system put together by an expert. Another show favorite of mine was getting to meet Michael and Barbara over at the Cozy Roadie booth. Coming from a background in broadcast audio, the cost and hassle of constantly transporting office chairs around the country inspired them to develop these high quality executive chairs in a box. With custom toolless hardware, they fold, stack, and transport far easier than a traditional chair and for a good bit less than any similar alternative that I've seen in the industry. We got a pre-production look at their new chair in development right now and that allows regular uh, or tall seating positions to accommodate the other crew members on the gig like spot and camera operators. Operators. There's so much more that we saw and as we get our footage and notes sorted out, we'll be sharing it all with you just as soon as we can. Thanks again to Pro Soundweb for helping to make this year's trip to NAMM possible for us, along with our dedicated Patreon supporters whose help was absolutely vital in traveling this far for an event. We had a chance to meet up with a number of subscribers in person and it was absolutely the highlight of the show for us. Getting to connect, talk shop, and to hear what you're excited to see from your favorite manufacturers was a lot of fun and I honestly can't thank you enough for taking time out of your show to meet up with us. To everyone we didn't get to catch up with, we really hope to see you there next year. That's all for this one. Subscribe and turn on those notifications to get updates as we continue to upload more videos from NAMM in the coming weeks. We'll see you next time.